Send the boys. They are launching GPT-9. The war between AI and human has started. No one is safe. Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. OVI, OV, however you pronounce it, is apparently a VO3-like audio and video generation model that you can use at home on your own computer to make strange videos like the ones you just saw there. Those familiar with the channel will know that I like to use the rodent method to keep things all neat and tidy, but if you love spaghetti, then just use Kijai's example workflow, or if you prefer, you can pause, take screenshots, and all that sort of good stuff for making the workflow much easier to understand like I've done here yourself at home. Plus, if you find these videos helpful and maybe you'd like all this work done for you already, then you can support the channel via Patreon as your support helps me make even more workflows for you and to share these videos with everyone. The freedom to choose is, of course, yours and a huge thank you to all supporters because you make this possible. What does this model do? Well, there's a little note here in my Comfy UI workflow that has all the important details. They say OVI is a VO3-like video and audio generation model that simultaneously generates both video and audio content from text or text and image inputs. You can generate synchronized video and audio content simultaneously. Do text only or text and image conditioning. It generates five second videos at 24 FPS with a default size of 720 by 720, although it can handle other resolutions and aspect ratios. If you don't have a powerful enough computer at home, then there's also a hugging face space there where you can play with the model as well. Sounds good. Well, let's get into it then. I'll be using Kijai's nodes, and there are a couple of options with regards to the model files you can download. There's the FP8 scaled versions, and those are about 6 gig each, or the BF16s, which are about 12 gig each. The OVI loader is where you select those models that you just downloaded. Here I've got the video model and the audio model. There's also the MM Audio, which is brand new here as well. So that is a different loader and the standard WAN VAE. Unlike previous WAN video settings, FP16 has issues. So the base precision of BF16 is best this time around. Of course, to use Sage Attention, you'll need that installed. And SDPA does actually work, though not quite as well. The LoRa's setting this time around is completely empty. I've still got it in there in case we do get some LoRa's in the future or you just want to try existing ones. Applying the block swap and the LoRa's is the same as my previous WAN video workflows. And here we've got the block swap with the default of 15 and also the torch compile options. Unlike when we've been using those lightning LoRa's for WAN, the experimental options are used this time with both the easy cache and skip layer guidance being connected by default. And playing around with this probably took me the longest amount of time with varying results. The default skip layer guidance of block 11 is pretty decent, but using other blocks can drastically change the output for the better or indeed make it much worse. I definitely spent far too much time trying loads of combinations before finally coming to the conclusion that it's just taking far too long and I actually need to get this video out. Sometimes skipping three or four blocks would give decent results, but it was so inconsistent that I honestly can't make any recommendations here other than skip layer guidance 11 is definitely better than not skipping it. So experiment away and do let me know if you find any great combinations. The experimental args you can connect up, but they're disconnected by default and I didn't see any benefit from the various settings I tested. Prompting is where things get very different as not only do we now have three sets of prompts, one for the scene and two for audio, but you can also set different negatives for the audio and visuals. I've added extra carriage returns in this prompt just to make it easier to see those various tags. You start off with your typical prompt to describe the scene like you would do with other models such as the plain old WAN. However, for the speech, you'll need to enclose those things in the S and E tags. Now, it isn't perfect and sometimes you'll get the scene description text coming out as speech instead. But the thing I found which helps to minimize that a little bit is to wrap the speech in quotes 
like I've done here. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but I do think it reduces the chance of things going wrong. This first negative prompt underneath is the one that applies to the video, and as they can often generate with subtitles, that's one thing you may wish to pop in there. The second negative prompt underneath is the one which applies to the audio. So things like robotic, echo and muffled are words which you may want to put in there. I found that the two most common accents appear to be American and Australian, and even with this negative it will still often generate non-British sounding voices, which is of course very distressing. Still, one can only hope the awed cap prompting can keep things British. As you can see from the optional settings, there are two modes with this workflow text to video or image to video. Personally, I've tended to prefer the text to video, but image to video can be quite fun as well, even though there isn't quite as much motion. Speaking of which, this is the reference image group. Like we've seen before with WAN, it's pretty basic. Just select your image, pick a size for it, and Robert's your father's brother. On to the sampling group then, and here you can see the various notes I've taken along the way. With BlockSwap 15 and the FP8 scaled model, it used around 13 gigs of VRAM. So if you've got less than that, you may need to increase the block swap value a bit, which does mean things will take a bit longer, but hey. The larger model didn't take that much more VRAM, registering as using 17 gig on my system, and the quality wasn't that much different. For example, for the prompt we just went through, this is the BF16 version. I really think it is so very wonderful when one has some decent wood. And then this one is the FP8 version. I really think it is so very wonderful when one has some decent wood. Can you tell the difference? I certainly can, but it's not that great and both videos seem to come out fairly well. Both of them used these same sampler settings, so 50 steps, but there is also now a separate CFG there for the audio as well. The WAN video empty MMA audio latency is the thing that connects up to samples, and interestingly enough that has a different length, so 157 compared to 121. And throughout these examples I'm using the cache args, the skip layer guidance, and as mentioned, the experimental args are not connected. The image to video section down here is pretty similar, apart from this time we're sending in the image embeddings as well. So here you can see the WAN video encode samples is connected to that WAN video empty embeds. This time the video generation looks like this. I really think it is so very wonderful when one has some decent wood very nice, moves the mouth pretty well, but as you can see, the motions are somewhat more limited than with the text to video option. Ranking up that resolution for this next video then, where I'm using a more rodent themed prompt to show you where things can go a bit wrong. Now, everything looks okay in here. I've described the scene, I've got the S and E tags and also some odd cap stuff. For the resolution, I'm using 1280 by 704 so where is the issue? Well, let's have a watch. Are you fully aware that these telephone boxes won't be as common in the future? Okay, so not bad apart from some strange telephone movement, but basically the audio gets cut off at the end. However, using this input image, if we check the image to video option with the same sampler settings, fully aware that these telephone boxes won't be as common in the future. And this time the audio does not get cut off at the end. Pretty strange, eh? Certainly something to be aware of, as you definitely won't get perfect results every time. One thing I did find, however, is that changing the sampler to DPM++ SDE beta in this case, like I've done here, can produce better audio and follow the prompt a little better too but the video will look very much different. Still, if we have a listen this time. Are you fully aware that these telephone boxes won't be as common in the future? Yep, that's not cutting things off anymore. Things aren't all golden with that different sampler though, as if we have a look at the same thing with the image to video. Are you fully aware that these telephone boxes won't be as common in the future? 
Oh yes, now we've got audio issues with the image to video version. So swapping things around like that, not quite as good. Hence, for image to video, probably stick with Uni PC. And if playing around a bit more is the sort of thing that you like to do, here's an example of using a different skip layer guidance. So this time we're skipping layers 7 and 11, plus we're also starting a bit later. You can see that start value increased there too. The result in text to video gives us this. Are you fully aware that these telephone boxes won't be as common in the future? So there you go. That's changed the result quite a lot from last time. OK, so still fairly reasonable, but also note that over here in the sampler, I had to reduce the CFG down to just 3.3. It could maybe even go a little lower here as well, and I needed to do that to stop the resulting video from getting that burnt in look. I think it has slightly increased the crispness though, which is one of the things you may be able to do if you get a decent combination of those skipped layers. Do you remember you can play around with the audio CFG and the normal CFG as well, as you can still get some fairly reasonable results. Why yes, I do actually exist inside your computer. Although as you can hear there, a lot of the time you still do get some background music. And if you like getting all nerdy with Comfy UI workflow details and stuff, then don't forget to like and subscribe for even more. This earth spaghetti reminds me of my first husband. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.